outside right now it's probably 62 degrees, 63 degrees. And inside this greenhouse it's a consistent almost 80. Aquaponics is plants growing in water and fish growing in the water as well. And their waste provides all the fertilizer the plants need. Uh, here we have three 300 gallon tanks. Two of them contain catfish which love this climate and then the third tank contains goldfish. The only thing we have to add to this system regularly is fish food. The fish do the rest of the work and the plants filter out whatever the fish wouldn't enjoy having in their water. Even though we're surrounded by water, aquaponics is 95% more efficient with its water than traditional growing. If you pour water onto your plants, only about two to five percent of that water makes it into the plant even. But here in the aquaponics setup, the water flows back and forth, and while we do get evaporation, it's nothing close to what the kind of evaporation levels you get in soil. This entire system here probably has a few thousand gallons of water, and there's only two 35 watt pumps powering the whole thing. There's no other electricity um, involved anywhere. And all of that means that less than the cost of powering two incandescent light bulbs all day, we can run this entire system and grow hundreds of pounds of food a year. But we don't need any uh, true mechanical filter uh, because the plants are so effective at picking stuff out of the water and turning it into digestible chemicals. And we don't need to add air because there's so much flowing water um, that falls through all the root systems and pipe mechanics we have going on here that all the air we need is provided just from the flow of water and the process that plants do naturally. I didn't realize how much chlorine and other chemicals were in our tap water until I tried to start a system from scratch. Um, fish can't live in our tap water. Plants can't live in our tap water. Uh, luckily, chlorine evaporates easily, it off-gasses. So all you have to do is leave a, a bucket of water out and all the chlorine will eventually evaporate. Very importantly, we have a bunch of ladybugs we've re released here, and they are predators for um, aphids and other things that we don't like, and the greenhouse kind of keeps them in here instead of going out and enjoying the world. These tanks are full of bacteria, full of tiny worms, full of shrimp, full of tiny snails, and all they do is chow down on the fish waste. And if it weren't for these little tiny creatures that live in these tanks, the fish waste would collect and it wouldn't turn in anything that the plants could deal with. Got ourselves here, catfish. This is only maybe a month old, month and a half old, and it grew from little tiny cuttings to this entire bush in the course of those couple of months. And it's things like that. Um, some things don't grow in aquaponics, things that require a soil to develop a root, like a carrot or a potato. But then other things that naturally grow in water, they, you cannot grow them more efficiently than you could in the system. This is a muir lettuce. It only gets this big. It's uh, delicious. It's very uh, tender. And you can see it has these really vibrant white roots. All of the plants do. They love water and they don't need soil whatsoever. Because fish are one of the cornerstones of the entire system and it's really easy to poison fish, aquaponics is by nature organic. You can't use pesticides on the plants because they'll just seep right into the water and kill our all important fish. So just as a side effect of how the system works, you get some of the cleanest, most nutrient dense food possible.